I've said it before and I'll say it again, waging a legal battle on social media is a risky business and it looks like Rudy Giuliani just stepped in it. <laughs> Viva Fry, Montreal litigator turned YouTuber, and today it is yet another defamation vlog. This one is in the order of $1.3 billion filed by Dominion Voting Systems against Rudy Giuliani. Now, for those of you who have been around this channel long enough, you know that I said in the past that taking a legal battle to social media is risky business. It has to be done delicately. You have to weigh your words, weigh your posts. Robert Burns and I have talked about it during previous live streams. Sometimes you have to do it to raise awareness for the lawsuit, but there are good ways and bad ways of doing it. There are safe ways and dangerous ways of doing it and it looks like Rudy Giuliani has stepped in it in things he said about Dominion voting systems during the 2020 presidential election and the contest that followed that election. Now just a heads up and a disclaimer because YouTube has implemented new rules about people expressing opinions on the 2020 presidential election. Nothing in this video constitutes my opinion on the 2020 election. All that I'm doing is breaking down the 1.3 billion dollar lawsuit filed by Dominion voting systems against Rudy Giuliani for things he said in the weeks and months following the 2020 election. In the United States District Court for the District of Columbia. The District of Columbia, this is already starting off badly for Rudy Giuliani, and we're just going to read the introduction to the lawsuit because it basically sets out the lawsuit as a whole, and then we're going to go through some of the specific allegations in the lawsuit. During a court hearing contesting the results of the 2020 election in Pennsylvania, Rudy Giuliani admitted that the Trump campaign, quote, doesn't plead fraud, end quote, and that, quote, this is not a fraud case, end quote although he was unwilling to make false election fraud claims about Dominion and its voting machines in a court of law because he knew those allegations are false, he and his allies manufactured and disseminated the, quote, big lie, end quote, which foreseeably went viral and deceived millions of people into believing that Dominion had stolen their votes and fixed the election. Giuliani reportedly demanded $20,000 per day for that big lie, but he also cashed in by hosting a podcast where he exploited election falsehoods to market gold coins, supplements, cigars, and protection from, quote, cyber thieves, end quote. Now, we have done a ton of defamation vlogs on this channel. I'm not going to go over the criteria for a defamation case in any meaningful detail. Suffice to say only that in order to succeed on a claim for defamation, statements have to have been made published. Those statements have to have been false, and those false statements have to have caused damage to somebody else's reputation. And when it comes to statements made about public figures, not only do those statements have to be false, those statements have to have been published with actual malice, and I have no doubt that Dominion Voting Systems will be treated as a public figure for the purposes of this defamation lawsuit. So Dominion Voting Systems is not only going to have to prove that the statements Giuliani made were false, but that Rudy Giuliani made those statements with actual malice. That being said, typically in the practice of law, there is something known as litigation immunity, or the concept or the term will vary depending on your jurisdiction, but typically lawyers cannot be held liable for defamation when they are making statements in the court of law in the context of representing their client. From what I understand, in other jurisdictions, those statements could be made outside of the courtroom, but typically so long as they're made in the context of representing a client, even if they are false, even if those statements about another person are false, so long as they are made in the context of representing a client, the lawyer themselves will not be held liable for defamation. And with that said, now we can fully appreciate why Dominion Voting Systems is alleging that Rudy Giuliani made these statements not only in the context of representing a client, but in the context of enriching himself on his own personal endeavors. That, in my humble opinion, might be a decisive element in this lawsuit in that the statements Rudy Giuliani made were made not only in the context of representing the Trump campaign in a court of law, they were made by Giuliani himself on his own personal social media platforms for his own enrichment. Dominion was founded for the purpose of creating a fully auditable paper-based vote system that would empower people with disabilities to vote independently on verifiable paper ballots. As it grew, Dominion developed technology to solve many of the technical and voter intent issues that came to light as a result of the 2000 election. Its systems are certified under standards promulgated by the U.S. Election Assistance Commission, EAC, reviewed and tested by independent testing laboratories accredited by the EAC, and were designed to be auditable and include a paper ballot backup to verified ballots. Indeed, recounts of paper ballots have repeatedly shown that Dominion machines accurately counted votes in the 2020 election, conclusively disproving the election-fixing claims promoted by Giuliani and his allies. As a result of the defamatory falsehoods peddled by Giuliani in concert with Sidney Powell, Russell Ramsland, L. Lynn Wood, Mike Lindell, Patrick Byrne, Lou Dobbs, Fox News, Fox Business, Newsmax, One America News Network, The Epic Times, and other like-minded allies and media outlets determined to promote a false preconceived narrative about the 2020 election, Dominion's founder and employees have been harassed and 
government have received death threats and Dominion has suffered unprecedented and irreparable harm. Dominion brings this action to set the record straight, to vindicate the company's rights under civil law, to recover compensatory and punitive damages, and to stand up for itself, its employees, and the electoral process. Something else I have said time and time again, allegations in a lawsuit are just that. They are merely allegations. They are not yet proven fact. No evidence has been adduced as of yet. These are merely allegations on paper yet to be proven in a court of law. One thing Dominion harps on are statements that Rudy Giuliani made before a Pennsylvania court where Rudy Giuliani said in front of a court he admitted before open court that this was not a fraud case. The Pennsylvania lawsuit was not a fraud case. Giuliani made this admission before the court even though the Dominion systems were used in Pennsylvania and Dominion is going to hammer on this fact throughout the lawsuit. On November 9, 2020, the Trump campaign filed a complaint challenging the legitimacy of mail-in ballots and the conduct of election officials in Pennsylvania. Notably, although Dominion machines were used in Pennsylvania in the 2020 election, the Trump campaign's complaint did not include any allegations about Dominion. And it was in the context of this particular lawsuit that Rudy Giuliani said before open court that this is not an election fraud lawsuit. Yet despite this apparent admission before open court, Giuliani was on Lou Dobbs a few days later where he said something somewhat different. A few days later, Giuliani gave a televised interview on Lou Dobbs tonight, falsely telling a global audience that Dominion is owned by Smartmatic and that Smartmatic was formed, quote, in order to fix elections, end quote, by, quote, three Venezuelans who were very close to the dictator Chavez of Venezuela, end quote. He also claimed that, quote, Smartmatic, the company that owns Dominion, end quote, was being run by one of the people who was number two or three in George Soros' organization. The next day on his weekly radio show, Giuliani falsely told his audience that, quote, Dominion software really is Venezuelan. It's called Smartmatic, end quote. Now, for those of you who watch my weekly live streams with Robert Barnes, none of this is going to come as news to any of you because Robert Barnes has been saying for the last several months that people were in fact making very serious fundamental mistakes on the corporate structure of Smartmatic and Dominion. They were making fundamental mistakes, things that are verifiable in public records as to the corporate structure of Dominion. And despite the fact that Robert Barnes had been saying this publicly for months, it seemed that Rudy Giuliani wasn't listening or didn't hear and he publicly repeated these factually incorrect statements over and over again. It would seem that he repeated these factually incorrect statements over and over again, not just in the context of representing anyone in the court of law, but on his own podcast and the lawsuit goes on to allege as much. On November 13, 2020, Giuliani posted an episode of his podcast in which he capitalized on publicity he was receiving because of the big lie about Dominion. Along with the false accusation that Dominion had stolen the election, quote, technologically, end quote, Giuliani warned his viewers about, quote, cyber thieves, end quote, stealing home titles, quote, online, and threw his arms in the air as if to emphasize the obvious danger of entrusting important matters to technology. Giuliani then pitched his viewers on a service they could buy to protect themselves for just $596 for the four-year service if they used the promo code, quote, Rudy, when ordering. Why is Dominion making these allegations? Well, it is not only to embarrass Rudy Giuliani in a public loss, it is to show that Giuliani was making these statements, which Dominion claims were factually incorrect, not only in the context of representing a client, but for his own personal enrichment on his own personal social media. This will invariably cause problems for any litigation immunity that Rudy Giuliani is going to later plead, and I suspect he is going to plead it, but this is certainly going to cause some problems for that argument. That, and it's going to bolster the argument that Giuliani was making these allegedly factually incorrect statements to the detriment of Dominion for his own personal gain. The lawsuit then goes on to talk about the very various press conferences that Giuliani gave in the context of representing Donald Trump, how video clips from those press conferences went viral on social media and the impact they had. Video of the DC press conference was foreseeably tweeted by the GOP and by Giuliani's client, Donald Trump, to his more than 88 million followers, garnering over 240,000 likes and over 24,000 comments and being foreseeably retweeted over 58,000 times, instantly and irreparably damaging Dominion's reputation and business to a global audience and putting the lives of Dominion employees in danger. The same day as the press conference, Fox News' Tucker Carlson reported that despite his explicit requests, neither Sidney Powell nor, quote, others around the Trump campaign, end quote, had provided any evidence to support the claims that had been made against Dominion. Despite the lack of evidence expressly acknowledged by Tucker Carlson and others at Fox News, Fox News gave Giuliani a platform on Sean Hannity's show that very evening to make the false accusation that, quote, a Dominion employee, end quote, in Detroit on election night had been, quote, notified by Smartmatic in Frankfurt that Biden was way behind, end quote. Giuliani warned, quote, these people want to destroy us. 
They are very, very bad people. Somehow the Democrat Party was hijacked by Clinton, and since then it's gone more corrupt and more corrupt and more corrupt, end quote. Then making a throat-slashing motion, Giuliani instructed viewers, quote, somebody's got to cut the head off, end quote. There are good ways and bad ways to take a litigation file to social media, to the media. There are ways to do it to the benefit of your client, and there are ways to do it to the detriment of your client and to the detriment of yourself. And it certainly looks like Rudy Giuliani may have done it in a manner that was detrimental not only to his client, but to himself as well. Again, these are merely allegations. Giuliani will have a defense. He will have discovery. He will have his say and his day in court. But for the time being, these allegations look pretty damning. And Giuliani's statements look pretty over the top and pretty hyperbolic. The lawsuit then goes on to allege how the statements made by Giuliani were factually incorrect. I'm not going to go through all of them. Suffice only to say that when you make public statements about a corporate structure of a company that are factually incorrect and that are publicly factually incorrect, you're off to a very bad start. He also falsely proclaimed that in Antrim County, quote, the machine flipped the vote. In other words, when you press down Biden, you got Trump. And when you press down Trump, you got Biden. Giuliani repeated these false claims on his podcast, his weekly radio show, his Sunday morning radio show, and Twitter, garnering over 16,000 retweets and over 43,000 likes. Dominion then alleges that Giuliani willfully disregarded hard evidence that would have contradicted the statements he was making publicly. Giuliani intentionally disregards hard evidence and reliable sources, including Trump appointees, Republicans, and election security experts who rebut and disprove his false accusations about Dominion, while endeavoring to make the facts conform to the false preconceived narrative that the election had been fixed by Dominion, Giuliani was confronted with a number of facts that rendered his outlandish claims inherently improbable, if not outright impossible. For example, he has not explained how a decades-old international election rigging conspiracy involving independent testing labs accredited by the EAC and thousands of bipartisan local election volunteers could have evaded detection for so long. Giuliani also has not explained how, if Dominion were actually controlled by the associates of a Venezuelan dictator, it was permitted to operate in the United States by the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States, CFIUS. Then Dominion gets into the fact that there were allegedly publicly available documents that would have shown that what Giuliani was saying was false. Publicly available records prove that Giuliani's wild accusations about Dominion's origins are also demonstrably false. Dominion was not founded in Venezuela to fix elections for Hugo Chavez. It was founded in 2002 in John Poulos' basement in Toronto to help blind people vote on paper ballots. By 2009, Dominion's business had grown in the United States and a subsidiary company, Dominion Voting Systems Inc., was incorporated in Delaware and headquartered in Denver, Colorado. By 2018, the majority of the business's customers and employees were in the United States, so Poulos sold the majority stake of the business to U.S. investors. The lawsuit goes on with more allegations to that effect to show that the statements Giuliani made were demonstrably false before getting into the irreparable and enormous harm that Dominion allegedly suffered. As a result of the false accusations disseminated to a global audience by Giuliani, his allies and like-minded media outlets who acted in concert to promote a false preconceived narrative about the 2020 election despite the total lack of evidence to support it and despite the mountains of paper ballots and the army of credible sources disproving it, Dominion has suffered unprecedented reputational and financial harm and its employees' lives have been put in danger. Giuliani's false tweets about Dominion were liked over 534,000 times and were foreseeably retweeted over 160,000 times. The retweets disseminated Giuliani's false tweets to over 1.5 million Twitter accounts. Based on the average followers and the number of retweets overall, Giuliani's false statements about Dominion potentially reached more than 331 million Twitter accounts, or about the same number of accounts as the entire U.S. population. And then Dominion includes a number of examples of tweets sharing Giuliani's information. Later on in the lawsuit, Dominion goes back to reminding everyone how Giuliani was personally profiting off the statements he was making. But Giuliani's calculated caution did not last long. The day before Christmas Eve, he broadcast an episode of his Common Sense YouTube show in which he falsely charged Dominion with fixing the election with crooked machines that flip votes from Trump to Biden. In addition to rerunning his direct-to-camera advertisements for an, quote, American-owned cigar company, Giuliani also warned that a, quote, socialist storm is brewing, end quote, and pitched his audience on buying paid memberships, costing up to $500 for a lifetime membership in the, quote, conservative alternative to the AARP, end quote. Giuliani instructed his viewers to use his name when signing up. Giuliani also touted his defamatory falsehoods about Dominion while marketing gold and silver coins to his viewers, saying, quote, I 
accomplished a lot in 2020, exposing the truth, end quote, and warning that, quote, these are uncertain times, end quote, and that, quote, the one thing you can count on to protect what you have worked so hard for is physical gold and silver, end quote. He recommended that his viewers buy gold from, quote, the company you can trust, end quote, and told them to, quote, give them a call and tell them Rudy sent you, end quote. And Giuliani advised, quote, if you can call them right now, they'll give you up to $1,500 of free silver on your first order, end quote. And at the end of the lawsuit, Dominion sets out a relatively exhaustive list of all of the defamatory statements per se. Defamatory per se means that these statements are defamatory on their face with no further context, and the list is long. On November 12, 2020, Giuliani appeared on the Fox business show, quote, Lou Dobbs Tonight with Fox personality Lou Dobbs. Dobbs tweeted an embedded video of the interview which Giuliani retweeted. In the interview, Giuliani falsely stated, Dominion is a company that's owned by another company called Smartmatic through intermediary company called Indra. Smartmatic is a company that was formed by three Venezuelans who were very close to, very close to the dictator Chavez of Venezuela. And it was formed in order to fix elections. That's the company that owns Dominion. All of its software is Smartmatic software, so we're using a company that is owned by Venezuelans who were close to, were close to Chavez, and now close to Maduro, have a history. They were founded as a company to fix elections. I don't need to go over any more for the purposes of this vlog. You can read the lawsuit yourself and you can read all of the allegedly defamatory per se statements made by Giuliani, but the list goes on and on and on. It goes all the way to two little whys and that allegedly defamatory per se statement reads as follows. On January 22nd, 2021, Giuliani hosted his weekday radio show, quote, chat with the mayor, end quote, during which he falsely stated, Dominion is a voting machine. I'll just tell you one thing about it. You can change the vote. If you can change the vote in a voting machine, then it's built for one purpose and one purpose alone, and that's to cheat. It computes votes rather than just counts them. So long as you have Dominion, there is a clear and present danger that there's going to be a bump of two, three, four percent for whomever they want to bump it for. The facts that there were votes stolen, it has been proven that evidence is in the form of the things that are used to program these Dominion machines. It's evidenced by the examination of the machines in Antrim County, Michigan that showed 6,000 votes changed. And because Dominion knows that it is going to have to prove that these statements were made with actual malice, they include a sort of cookie cutter allegation to that effect at the end of the lawsuit. As set forth above in detail, Giuliani published these statements with actual malice, knowing or recklessly disregarding that they are false, misrepresenting evidence to support his false accusations, purposely avoiding or intentionally disregarding abundant and publicly available evidence, facts, and reliable sources, rebutting and disproving his false claims, espousing inherently improbable accusations, forming and sticking to a false preconceived narrative in spite of the facts, relying on facially unreliable sources, and when specifically put on notice of the truth and asked to retract, doubling down on and republishing his false accusations, all in furtherance of his plan to financially enrich himself to maintain and enhance his public profile and to ingratiate himself to Donald Trump for money and benefits he expects to receive as a result of that association, including but not limited to a reported $20,000 per day fee. Dominion is entitled to punitive damages under DC law because Giuliani's defamatory statements were accompanied with spite, malice, ill will, recklessness, wantonness, willful disregard of Dominion's rights, and other circumstances tending to aggravate the injury. Giuliani's statements are defamatory and defamatory per se. They have exposed Dominion to the most extreme hatred and contempt. Giuliani has directly accused Dominion of fraud, election fixing, conspiracy, and bribery, which are serious crimes. For Dominion, whose business is producing and providing voting systems for elections, there are no accusations that could do more to damage Dominion's business or to impugn Dominion's integrity, ethics, honesty, and financial integrity. Giuliani's statements were calculated to and did in fact provoke outrage and cause Dominion enormous harm. So that is the lawsuit. Let me know what you think of the lawsuit. Let me know where you think this lawsuit is going. Let me know what your predictions are for the outcome of this lawsuit. If this entire situation highlights nothing else, it should highlight how lawyers should tread carefully when taking their litigation public. It should highlight how careful attorneys should be when taking their litigation to social media, when making public statements about their client, even in the context of a litigation on social media. And it should highlight how careful attorneys have to be when taking litigation to social media to not look like they're doing so for their own personal benefit and not for the interests of their client. With that said, at the very least, now you have a better idea of what is alleged in that lawsuit so you can have a more sensitive discussion about it with friends and family over dinner if you're allowed to have dinner with friends and family and that's it if you like my video and you like my content please be sure to like share subscribe hit the notification bell drop a comment in the comment section below because it feeds the algorithm Feed me see more. If you want to support my channel, all of these support links are in the pinned comment. We've got PayPal, Patreon, subscribe to our YouTube membership. Robert Barnes and I have a page on Local. It is called vivabarneslaw.locals.com. I have all of my content also on Rumble. But more important than any of that, take care of yourselves. Check in on friends and family. Make sure everyone around you is doing well. And now you know your vlog. Peace out.